Hello, Oz. How are you doing? Oh, no, I'm doing fine, I think. Thank we, you. We missed you at Bristol, but yep. you're on my list for uh, Synthfest. So you've been doing, um, you've been exploring the world of analog. I mean, your modules are like, you know, your Mr. Utilities do everything, yep. fantastic digital utilities and, and some. And now you've been exploring some different uh, areas, right? Yes, I have. I've been, um, in a way, getting back to my roots. Not my roots in terms of building, but my roots in terms of using the, the reason I bought modular since 15 years ago was because I liked the sound of analog oscillators and filters. Um, but until very recently, I'd never built one. Uh, so what we've been rectifying that basically. And I now have a range of eight different analog modules, which are all in this little case here. Uh, most of them are here. Uh, so I've got a patch set up, everything controlled from an FH2. Um, uh, a whole expert sleepers, analog voice, envelopes, oscillators, filter, VCA, uh, phaser, and then my most recent one, which is this kind of weird octave fuzz effect, run out to a couple of distings at the end of chain for looping and um, granulation and general audio effects. Yeah, all kind of burbling away in a nice analog style. Um, so have you found it it must be interesting because working with analog, obviously, it's like, well, there's stuff that you think, oh, I could do it, but you can't. I mean, you, there are limitations that there you can't. There are limitations. Just of physics, whereas with digital, you can almost sort of imagine anything and make it happen, right? Yeah, to a degree. I mean, I guess if you're imaginative, you can make it happen in analog. But I think that the, the one thing I would draw from it, having been in the habit of doing these digital things and then endlessly updating them, the analog, once it's built, it's is done. It's just done. It's done. Oh, that's um, an interesting. Which is so refreshing. That, that, I could imagine. Yeah, that must be quite a big change. Yeah. I mean, I love, I love my kind of user community with the distings and the feedback I get and the feature requests I get. But it's never, it is nice it's just never finished. Exactly. <laughs> which is good. But yeah, the analog stuff is done. It, it, I design it, and it, when I decide it's finished, it's finished, and I make it. So, yeah, I'm very pleased with what I've got. Like, it's a, everything's. They're traditional functions like oscillator and filter, but they're all slightly different to anything that I'm aware of that's gone before. Right, okay. Because otherwise, why would I bother? Because I don't, I'm not into making clones. I've, I've tried to make something a little bit unique. So like, for example, the filter, two or three pole switchable. In two pole mode, it'll self oscillate, which very few or if any two pole filters will. Right. Just, be, just because it's built in that slightly different way, it has a different sound. It's another flavor in your Eurorack, basically. Uh, the oscillators are based on a sine wave core rather than the more traditional triangle or triangle core. Sorry, triangle yeah, or triangle. ramp. ramp. Um, so again, it, just being able to have a very pure sine wave and wave shape it, it just works in a slightly different, different way. Harmonics. Makes it sound different. Is this making a sound then? Have we got to It's not currently, but I will. Um, I think it's doing now. Yeah, so this is a big analogy thing. Um, I've got um, arpeggiating on the FH2. It's my squelchy filter, non-squelchy filter. Make it a bit slower again. So that's the filter, they've got the phaser going on here as well, which is kind of swooshing it around the place. Uh, I've got the oscillators in octaves, but so let's go down to... So there's there's my sine wave shape, right? Let's just make it a bit higher. Oh, nice. And then with the wave shape... That's quite an interesting shape. That's a, that's not a, that doesn't sound like a wave shaping I've heard. You know, no, it's, it's different, uh, different. There's two different flavors. One of which kind of turns the trying the sign into this kind of raspy ramp kind of shape, and the other output the hairy triangle. The hairy triangle. <laughs> the other one takes it into a slightly softer shape, which is more akin to a 
Um, Much like a, that is more like a triangle rather than the ramp. The way, because of the way it wave shapes it as well, you kind of get this unusual effect that in the middle, it kind of jumps up an octave. Nice. Which is just a small. So that w with a LFO on it to animate it, it just gives you some nice timbral movement, which I enjoy. Uh, then bring in the. Are you tempted to go hybrid now, though? That's the thing. I mean, it's like, oh, you could put some digital control of this and that and the other in, and or, or are you well, trying yeah, to go stay pure in the per module? I mean, maybe not within a single module. I think that this is this is a hybrid system now, right? I've got my digital control, analog sound generation, and then some digital effects on the end of chain. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not into building like a huge module well because then you'd I have to update the software never. right okay. sorry yeah and you'd have to update the software again no, exactly. <laughs> i could build a massive thing with all these things behind a single panel but i like keeping it modular keeping the individual functions um functional so let's i guess i did, didn't show you the fuzz there which is the thing i've just released i'll just do that manually um let's just turn it up So it's it's based it's on almost a, wave folding in its own right. Actually, exactly. Well, it's the thing where once you've got it on a kind of relatively simple analog waveform, it is basically a wave folder. But because it's a non-linear distortion, as soon as you start getting more than one tone, like a chord or a blended oscillators, it becomes much more interesting. So if I just give you a quick demo of what I mean, if I take the oscillator back to its um, sine wave shape and then bring in the fuzz. Then you can hear that octave jump as I go up to the fuzz version. And it's barely fuzzed because it, it really is just folding it. But as soon as I make that more interesting, and especially if I bring in the other VCO, now there's two non, there's two waveforms that aren't quite in sync. So you've, you've got that much more non-linear sound. And then to really emphasize that, what I enjoy doing is having a little delay effect in front of the distortion. Yeah. So what you get then is when you change a note, there's a short period where the tail of the delay is a different note to the note you're playing. And then right. you really get a crunch until it settles down. So just do that, give it a bit of delay. Yeah, that's quite fizzy, isn't it? That's really... Yeah, and it gets even fizzier with this control here. Yeah, I mean, you can... Sounds like Hendrix, man. <laughs> it's exactly the Hendrix effect. It, it, yeah, is, well, it the, is the octave it? fuzz that yeah. Hendrix used to use. So, But it's under CV control. So, like, the gain has got a CV input that center control I was wiggling has got a CV input and the mix has got a CV input so you can put an LFO or an envelope or whatever you like on the amount of distortion and really sculpt it. It's also got a couple of outputs which are envelope followers ah, okay. uh, which is kind of a bonus feature but it's also a particularly nice thing to self patch back the envelope follower into say the mix so that you, your attacks go distorted but your sustains maybe back off the distortion a little bit. Uh, just a nice little bit of flexibility. So yeah, it, it's it's one of those things that I think for me distortion is is a very. I mean, you can emulate it in digital, but it's such a easy thing to do well in analog. Um, whereas it's to get a decent digital distortion, I think is a lot harder. harder so I think yeah, that's yeah. why that's why I use these things. So all these available now? What's the what all are the of these are available now? What yeah, the price I've, ranges. So. The ones I've not shown you are one of the envelopes. Well, I've not even really talked about the envelope. Um, and my other weird filter distortion thing, which I can barely describe. Um, so <laughs> go look that one up. But yeah, they're all available now. The, that one, the Octifuzz, is the most recent release just recently. Um, should all be in stock at your favorite retailer. What sort of price range are we talking about? Um, most of them are 
159 pounds. Uh, the envelopes are a little bit more. But uh, yeah, nice. Affordable end of things, I would say. Thank you very much, Oz. Thank you. Thank you.